everyone, Boomzy here with the Gunpla Network. Today we're going to review the high grade Universal Sentry Kashatra. Now, I did want to take a moment and thank our sponsors. This video is made possible thanks to those fine folks over at Hobby Link Japan, the world's largest online shop for hobby, toys, tools, and everything in between. With the option of a personal private warehouse, currency filter, worldwide shipping, and much, much more. So, if you're interested in this kit or any others, be sure to check out their link in the description below. Alright, now it is no surprise that this kit is a beast. A normal high grade Gramps usually stands around about 13 centimeters or so. This thing from foot to head is about 18 and from foot to binder top is about 23 centimeters in total. So that is really big. Just to get an overall scale of that, let's go ahead and do the size comparison. Here it is next to the SD cross silhouette, the high grade 1144 scale. Next to the Master Guide, you can see the sheer ferocity and size of this colossal monster. Now before we get into the articulation for this kit, I did want to mention that the binders are very very heavy, so they do cause it to get a little bit like of that back lean. If you don't balance out the legs fairly well, you can spread them out and kind of have it posed, but if you put them straight, it's going to cause it to bend backwards or even lean forward, so um, depending on how you have the binders on it. I would recommend putting it on a stand, and it does come with an attachment here. And this attachment, you're going to want to attach to the Master Grade Style Action Base. So what you're going to do is want to pop this piece off here, take the attachment, and slide it on. There is a armor piece underneath that you can knock out, which is here. And what you're going to do is press on the side and it should come right out. And taking a look at that inside, you can see where that peg will attach. This will give the much needed stability for the Kshatriya as it is a fairly heavy kit. I don't recommend using any smaller ones as they will feel wobbly and it is a little bit dangerous. Alright, I did want to mention that this is straight out of the box with the stickers provided. Nothing additional, all the part separation and color separation is actually part of the unit. Now you will notice that this chest piece has a very ugly sleeve sticker. I would highly recommend painting this or even using the reverse wash, which we do have a video and you can see that in the link in the description below. Here's another look at that sticker that you can see there, it's just not great looking. It's folded underneath and that didn't do it any justice. And up here you can see that separation on that crease. This is going to come straight off once I'm done with the review. The head is beautifully crafted. I actually really love this design as well as the giant fin. And some of you may have noticed that the head is a little raised up. I did that on purpose because you're able to get a lot of articulation from this uh, other than when it's pressed down in its normal mode. So essentially you're just going to want to pull it off its peg a little bit and you're going to get a little bit of that left and right. There's not much rotation, especially when you press the head where it's supposed to go, which is here. I'm personally not a fan of it there, it kind of makes it seem like a turtle. So moving into the arm articulation, uh, you are going to get a nice gimmick here that you can raise this up and down. There is this gimmick to bring it forward. There is quite the heavy seam line here, some of you may want to clean that up. I'm just going to wait until I do the modifications on it before I paint. Bend at the elbow, you're going to get a double joint there, but it's not going to go too much. Here's another look at that bend from the other side. And you can get a full rotation, you're just going to have to move the arm up and you can go ahead and spin around. One of the disappointing things for me with this kit is that it only came with one standard holding hand. As you can see there's some really nice detail there for that piping. On each shoulder there's going to be some peg holes which attach with the binders fairly easily. Without the binders on, like I said, you can get a nice full rotation there, but really, um, I don't see anybody taking the binders off of this kit as they are very, very awesome looking. I did remove the binders just to show the back of the unit a little bit easier. It does have a little bit of a torso wiggle, and you can pretty much get a 360 degree turn here but it may come a little loose. All of the white and yellow parts that you see are actually color separated. Amazing. 
this cod piece doesn't move at all. Front skirt does a little wiggle. It's got a little bit of uh, back and forward as well. Side skirt's really tight. It's on a peg, but uh, it feels a little unnatural as it kind of like locates and then feels like it dislocates. Inside, you're just gonna see some more color separation. Leg articulation kick to the side. Really, really good. Let's check that stanky leg. Fantastic. Kick up to the front. Pretty minimal. The uh, knee guards here kind of block that. And kick to the back. We're going to get blocked, but if you move the leg out, I mean, you're not really going to get too much. The bend at the knee. Pretty good. The bend at the knee is easier if you have the leg out, but you can see that it's a pretty nice full, almost a little bit over 90 degree bend. This armor piece does move. The foot is just on a ball peg, so you're going to get the pretty much the same uh, movement that you would expect. There are some pretty cool details down here on the bottom of the feet. And some of you may notice that the bluish gray is supposed to be black, but I actually prefer it in this color. So you are going to get four binders. We'll go ahead and just take a look at one of them. I'll put the rest on and we'll take a look at that one in detail. All right, so there's a lot going on with the binder. Uh, you got some mechanical pieces here that you can move, as well as these thrusters, so we'll go over all of that. Starting up top, this is where this piece connects, but I wanted to show a few things with that. It does have a locking mechanism, so if you move this back, you can actually see these notches, and there's two notches that you can kind of lock into position. Also here, this is a nice area to keep it nice and balanced, but you are able to move it pretty much any way you want, and that kind of keeps it in place. And you are going to get a full up and down, and that's really tight thanks to that ABS plastic. And truly for a high grade, I think they did a phenomenal job with the details that are provided with the binder. These are all parts separated. The thrusters, some of them feel tight and some of them feel loose. Like this one's tight and this one's loose and I'm not really sure why, but you can move these around kind of like a joystick on a fight stick. There are 24 funnels. Yes, 24 funnels. They're not as bad to clean up as you think. I mean, even if you don't want to clean them up, you can just clean up the top and leave the bottom as they're not exposed. I did wish that this came with some kind of specialty action base. I may have to find a third party one to get all these funnels out because it will look really cool. You are able to remove these individually. And here's a little look at the funnel itself. I didn't do a great job in cleaning them up, but I will later. Moving down, I do want to just move the subarm. I wanted to take a closer look at that detail on the inside. Now the subarm does move down as well as out. You're not going to get any rotation, so don't try that. There's going to be some nice piping style detail inside. This subarm does come out. And some of you might be a little bit too young, but it reminds me of those little like grabby claw things that we used to have as kids. The binder does move all the way around in a nice rotation. So I did remove the head. I did want to show that there is movement for the mono eye. And there's just the pink sticker underneath. You're going to see a little piece. I just use like a guitar pick or, or uh, maybe a toothpick or something like that. And you can just move the mono eye. So the kit didn't come with very many accessories at all. Uh, you're really limited in those, but I'll show you the ones that it did come with. This is the plug that we knocked out of the bottom to add to the action base. Or if you're putting in a standing pose, this will cover that up. Here's the foil sticker sheet. We used pretty much every single one of them. The ones on the legs, uh, let me show you that real quick. The ones on the legs are kind of big. So when you're putting them there, I just use the Q-tip to kind of press them down. They don't look great. I plan on taking them out anyways. And you can see those Mondo kind of ugly sleeve stickers there. If you don't want to paint it, honestly, you can barely tell from far away. Maybe this one here, but the sleeves, they, they really don't look bad. You're going to get two beam sabers with those square green handles. These are pretty much the same size as the Master Grade beam sabers. Not too much detail or anything special going on with them. I mean, they're kind of big, so if you want to, you can use them as a chopstick and pick up. Come on. 
my chopstick skills. There we go. Pick up the only leftover runner in the entire kit. The PC runners. And these are good backups, but... So just something quick I wanted to mention. I did rip off the hands off of my Nightingale. They're here. And you are able to remove them like so. And there you're just going to see that little ball joint. And you can get a nice articulated hand. Yes, yeah, it's, it's the wrong color, but if you have anything similar in the RE100 line or any of the other 100s that will fit, you can probably get it in there. So what do I think about the high-grade Universal Century Kshatriya? Well, a little bit of history for it. It was printed in 2009, and during its release, it was the third most expensive high-grade produced by Bandai. Um, that was following trail behind the Psycho Gundam and the truly ridiculous Dendrobium. Also, thanks Zeta for the free 99 Gundam knowledge. Hmm? Oh yeah. No problem, Boomzy. It does have a few negative points I want to mention, but nothing major. It's a little bit or back heavy or front heavy depending on how you place the binders. I wish that the kit included more hands, maybe some jazz hands, anything like that, so we could get more expression. But as you saw, you can just basically rip off an RE100 hand and attach it. So we may do some modifications in the future. These stickers, while not great, are still viable, as they don't look terrible from afar. The beam sabers, while large, were essentially... They're just lackluster. Looking at the kit, I still can't believe that this was printed in 2009. I mean, truly, it is astonishing. You can really tell that Bandai put some consideration into this kit prior to release. Majority of the parts are color separated instead of stickers. The build was very enjoyable from start to finish. As I mentioned, it does have a heck of a shelf presence and it's truly intimidating beast. If they do end up doing a RE1100 or Master Grade, I hope they follow more of the style of the line art. The articulation wasn't too much of an issue. With a little work, you may be able to get some pretty truly dynamic poses. Overall, I would highly recommend that you head over to Hobby Link Japan or your local hobby store if you can find this kit. It is the best option that we have to put a Kshatriya on your shelf outside of a third party or resin kit. The details on it are minor, but really if you want to put some more or if you just want to use those ones, that's completely fine. I think this is a kit for any Gunpla enthusiast. Alright, that's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to head over to our merch store in the link in the description below and use your code GN15 to save 15% off of your t-shirt, mug, sticker, long sleeve, or hoodie. This is Boomsy with the Gunplay Network and as always, don't forget to keep building.